lesson number 1.6 into the wild let us read the introduction at first Kiran Purandare born 1961 after BCom he studied environmental studies at Jordan Hill College of Education in Scotland he is a recipient of the sahitya puraskar pune's bhai madhav bagal award and best literature award given by cultural department of maharashtra state for his sakha nagzira he spent 400 days inside nagzira and nearby forest areas and wrote this award winning book this excerpt has been taken from the same he is a wildlife expert a bird watcher a writer an honorary wildlife warden in maharashtra he is also the founder of nisarg ved organization which works for nature conservation and community work around nagzira navegao a tiger reserve in bhandara and gondia districts he also founded kikas bird club in order to spread bird farming which is very popular among school going children of maharashtra part 1 as the name suggests the excerpt is an amazing experience of the writer where kiran purandare the solitary traveler is completely lost in the jungles of umbarzara he narrates how he lost his way at the fall of the dusk and the terrifying turmoil he underwent thereafter shouting for help would literally mean crying in the wilderness he also gives a detailed description of how he found his way towards the pitezari part 2 this part has been extracted from cn traveler magazine published by land rover india it is about shaz jung known for his wildlife photography it briefs us about his entry into this world of wildlife photography the insight that he received during this journey regarding the loss of the habitat of those heroes of the jungle and the genuine efforts that he took by establishing BCRTI for the conservation of forests by educating the local rural folks and providing them with a sound reliable source of income into the wild part 1 lost in the jungle the 8 and a half hour long day inside the hide was as fruitful as the jamba tree standing tall on the edge of umbarzara before wrapping up my day at this natural water hole i took entries of the avi fauna in my field notes since i was alone i rushed to pitezari village where i was stationed i camouflaged the hi the hide took my essentials came out of the hide and stretched out to my heart's content i lifted my camera bag 
and took the familiar trail to Pitezari. Negotiating the webbed leaves of teak wood and moha trees, trying to make minimal sound, I was trading cautiously among the woods. Walking alone in a jungle needs more alertness than walking with a companion. I was alone here like a fox, following the trail silently, watching with wide open eyes. My ears were grasping a variety of sound just when a familiar sound stunned me. Kak, kak, kakos, kak. It was a langur alarm call. The leader of the gang of langurs was sitting on a tall tree making alarm calls. Out of fear for life, rest of the langur brigade continued raising the alarm calls. The network of alarm calls was expanding its range as the petrified langurs speeded to the trees near and far and secured their places on treetops. All this upheaval was created by only one animal's presence, a leopard. Many animals make alarm calls when they see a predator tiger or leopard nearby. The langur is most reliable when it comes to finding clues about the presence of the apex predators in the jungle. The mighty elusive leopard of Umbarzara was out of its lair. He was on the prowl the stealthily moving figure in spotted gold-black cloak was spied by these langurs. Even the small ones from the legion of langurs were giving alarm calls. Check! Check! I stared put. Gauge the leader langurs target site and scanned the area visually, took some steps, stopped again. A fresh scat was lying before me on the trail. The bluish purple flies were hovering over it. I was sure that the leopard was somewhere near. The distant alarm call of four-horned antelope was adding to the chaos. I barely walked around 15 meters and stopped. I had apparently entered in the sanctum sanctorum of a miracle called leopard. But the big cat was not visible. It is an elusive animal. The surroundings were reminding me that I was all alone time and again as I moved forward on the trail to Pitezari, the fading alarm calls were still heard in the background. I could tell instinctively that the leopard had moved away. Meanwhile, I saw a man standing at a distance with a stick in his hand. As I approached, he appeared spooked due to alarm calls of the leopard. We greeted each other. He was Raju Iskape from Pitezari. He had come to collect logs but retreated due to the leopard's movement. Raju was amazed at my regular solitary visits to Umbarzara, the heaven for tigers leopards and sloth bears. We stopped under a kusum tree to take a break. We both felt a bit relaxed. 
Now we were four eyes, four hands, with a stick. Then we both resumed our walking tour. There was one tiny track that broke out of the main trail. I will take this route. You go straight, said Raju, and turn right. I kept walking straight until I climbed a familiar hillock. I crossed the cement pillar and stones stocked by Forest Development Corporation to mark the boundary of the forest compartment. Took another trail after climbing down. Walked across a beautiful mahua tree loaded with reddish brown leaves. The ground under the tree was cleaned very well. The thought instantly flashed in my mind. I had lost my way. Next moment I found another dusky trail. Hastily I took that trail which took me from a narrow gorge to an open field. The area was surrounded by hillocks of dry, deciduous, tropical forest. I turned back to spot the sun. Now the geographical west was set. The dusky trail had vanished. Good heavens, I was lost, completely lost in this jungle. That too, at a very dreadful time, the sun was melting down like a fleeting runner. Soaked in my own sweat, I felt like shouting to my heart's content. But there was no other soul to listen to my sound in this wilderness. I had two bags with me, the Shabnam bag having the camera and the other was a small colorful handmade bag used in villages to carry tiffin. The tiffin still had some stuff but I didn't feel like having it. The blossoming boxwood trees, the boop boop sound of cockle bird, the song of robin bird all appeared alien to me. It was more than an hour and I was still there searching for a suitable tree to climb and get secured. Turn back to the trail you left, my mind was telling me, but there were no signs of a trail. I had no other way to climb the hillock before me. There were more hillocks and some more around the one I was standing. Near my feet were the dried up droppings of sloth bear. The sloth bear of Umbarzara must be out in open, sniffing for food. I cautioned myself, thinking of averting all sorts of eventuality, I made a move. I ran down the hillock that I had climbed up at a frantic speed. The west was to my right hand side now. The evening breeze flew through my wet curled hair. My stomach was aching. I kept walking in hope. After around 50 steps I found a bright red soil trail. I found my silver lining on this trail. There were marks of bicycle wheel on this trail. That was a big consolation for me. There must be a village nearby. I reassured myself. More questions resurfaced. How far is the village? And where? In which direction? 
I climbed one more hillock and tried to locate signs of human civilization. My legs were trembling. As I reached the top of the hill, I jumped with joy. I heard the sounds of people talking in the loudspeaker. In a jiffy, I ran down the hill towards the sound with full vigor. I stumbled and fell down, saw droppings of blue bulls nearby, struggled, stood up, and decided which direction to move on. The signs of civilization were visible. The tiny sleepy village of Pitesari was visible through the green woods. The lantern of Rajiram Bhalavi's farm, the loudspeaker installed for Keshav Bhalavi's marriage, all were in clear sight. Turn left to spot the village, lake and familiar hillock, Suihudaki. The dog barked to welcome me to the village. The first thing I did was to take a bath. The shaking of limbs had lessened a bit. The stomach ache started again. Ate to the full and then slumped onto the cot. Lying awake, looking at the star-studded sky, I spoke to myself. There still exists a jungle where we can get lost. Isn't this a good luck? Taken from Sakha Nagzira by Kiran Purandare Part 2 Tracking the Panther of Nagarhol Shaz Jung is a wildlife photographer, cinematographer, big cat tracker, man-animal conflict resolution seeker, and lodge owner all rolled into one. When he is away from the jungles of Nagarhol, officially called the Rajiv Gandhi National Park, he is leading photography safaris in Africa or showcasing his work uh, at art galleries in capital cities and speaking to those interested in conserving the planet's riches. Shah's recalls with great clarity the incident that ultimately leads to his answering the call of the felines over a career dedicated to finance. It was somewhere around sunset. We were at a junction. The deer were calling. He says, We went around a blind turn. He continues, And up ahead on the path was this old leopard. You could tell he was past his prime. The jungle had taken a toll on him. He only had three canines. His eyes were sagging. Close to this leopard was another very young, good-looking male who was soon to come into his prime. It was like looking at the past and the present. It was clear that there was going to be a fight. Unfortunately, the sun was setting and uh, we had to leave. But the next morning I went back to the spot. Sitting on the high rock was that young leopard. Blood was dripping from the gra gash across his face. He sat there like he was the king of the jungle. I knew right then that he had taken over, that it was the beginning of a new journey for him and for me. Photographs of that leopard, the victor, Scarface, as Shahs named him, not only made Shahs famous among India's wildlife community, but also led to Shahs enviable reputation as a chronicler of the wild. Through my journey of photographing Scarface, I have discovered other leopards, his mates, and discovered his nemesis tigers. I also discovered the current protagonist of my work, Saya, while tracking Scarface.
This is the world's first black panther, the behavior of which is being documented so intimately on camera by tracking its movements. So far, all the research on the animal has been done through camera traps. Though many months of toil, Shaz has managed to collect precious footage, including that of the animal mating, to piece together the incredible landscape of a black panther's life. Saya, Scarface and Pardus, the leopard that lost to Scarface, have also led Shahs down a different path of discovery. Learning about them and the loss of their habitat has led Shahs to create the Buffer Conflict Resolution Trust of India, BCRTI. It's an agency that educates villagers who live on fringe of the forest on the importance of conservation. We are in the heart of the man-animal conflict zone, explains Shahs. There is no specific buffer zone here around Nagahol. The core area of the forest ends where the fields begin. In dry season, elephant and wild boar incursions into fields are very common. Older leopards like Pardus, who have lost territory in the forest, often carry away livestock from villages. This creates resentment among locals towards the animals on occasions leading to unpleasant situations. Putting tourist currency to good use under the BCRTI umbrella, Shahs provides locals with vocational training with the aim of educating locals on the merits of conservation and to help them benefit from tourist currency. The visitors at the resort are welcome to volunteer to teach a skills training class of their choice. The acquired skills enable locals to find employment with any of the numerous wildlife resorts in the region, if not in a far away city. Madagauda is one such local agriculturist who is trained at BCRTI and is now a certified naturalist employed by the bison. In the past, I have lost almost 80% of a season's yield of sugarcane to such animal attacks. I used to hate them, but now I have learned how important these animals are and the value of protecting them, he says. I have known these jungles for 35 years. I know where the animals are and I realize I can guide visitors and get paid for it. In a way, the animals are paying me back. The forests have taught me many things. For instance, listening is a sense far more important than sight. You have to switch off your vehicle, sit and listen, for the forest is constantly communicating through the voices of birds and animals, he explains. Tracking an animal also teaches you life lessons. The Black Panther has taught me patience, but above all, it has taught me to never stop discovering. There are just so many amazing experiences to learn and share with the world. CN Traveler magazine published by Land Rover India